السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته. طيب السلام ورحمة الله وبركاته. Um, now you check and see if the audio in the fridge you can hear it properly. Because the mic, I think you have to turn it down. Turn it down? No. Turn it down some more? Assalamu oh. alaikum. Okay, we're just testing this. Um, is it clear on the Facebook? Oh, we have to turn up the stream. Huh? Oh, turn up the stream. Okay. Let me know when it's when you can hear it clearly there. I've never done this Facebook live thing. <laughs> You've done it a lot of times. Y y'all go live every Friday. Yeah, yeah, but this is totally different. I mean, you can turn up the volume. Huh? Turn, turn, up, the volume. turn up a little bit. Yeah. Because yeah. remember, um, we fixed it. You fixed it. Yeah, yeah. Make sure that you're hearing it clearly. Go in a room like or outside and make sure you're hearing it clearly, right? Wait, just turn it down? Yeah, let me just hold on a second. Okay, testing one, testing two, testing one, testing two. Um, how is the audio on Facebook? Testing one, testing two, how is the audio on Facebook? Clear? Turn up the volume. Because this is going to have a... This is not going to have a negative effect? No, we can okay. also turn it up a little bit. They commented it's good. Yeah, it's good? Yeah. All right, great. Very good. Okay, Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Alhamdulillah. Alhamdulillah. He rubbil alameen. Wa salatu wa salamu ala rasulillah. Wa ala alihi wa sahbihi ajma'in. Assalamu alaikum, everyone. Assalamu alaikum to everyone on uh, our Facebook Live, whoever's watching us. Um, thank you for joining us. Inshallah, tonight we have a very special program. Um, two main objectives. We're seeking out Laylatul Qadr um, in different acts of worship and specifically in the act of fundraising. As you know, one of the best deeds you can do in the night of Qadr is give sadaqah, give charity, spend in a, in, a, in a noble cause. And our cause tonight, inshallah, is building the house of Allah, building the masjid and school for Florida Islamic Center. Um, and just to let you know, our volunteers, even today, they were out there working, and, um, and the masjid is coming along really nice, mashallah. Um, but we, will, we need a lot of help still, we need a lot of financial help. So myself, uh, Imam Abdul Azim, as well as Imam Abdullah, my good friend, inshallah, we're gonna be um, talking about the importance of donating, um, the importance of Laylatul Qadr, um, some of the Islamic etiquettes, and I will also share some information on the project, talk about particular aspects of the project um, that we're investing in. Um, but first and foremost, uh, let us, uh, let us uh, take the time out to, to, to recognize everyone who has donated and contributed, and we know it's only by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's help we ask Allah to reward and bless everyone. Amen. Because many people have donated already since the beginning of the month of Ramadan, and even before this. Um, but tonight we know many people are seeking out the night of Qadr and tonight is the 27th night and it's, it's very likely that this can be the night of Qadr so for those special people who want to give during this time we want to make this opportunity available inshallah so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to turn the mic over to Imam Abdullah he's going to talk a little bit about the virtues of Laylatul Qadr and giving and so on inshallah Jazakallah أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله وحده والصلاة والسلام على من لا نبي بعده ما بعد إن شاء الله تعالى my first point that I want to bring up with everyone is a reminder that I shared with my community uh, in the masjid, and I also shared with my own, my personal family. Uh, and I would like to share with you all. And that is uh, the fact that uh, time is, is short. Life is very, very short. Um, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He says in the Quran, يا أيها الذين آمنوا 
كتب عليكم الصيام كما كتب على الذين من قبلكم لعلكم تتقون أياما معدودات Allah says, O oh, you who have believed, we have ordained upon you fasting the way that we have ordained upon the people before you fasting in order that you may obtain piety. Ayam and ma'adudat, a numbered amount of days. Meaning that fasting in the month of Ramadan is just a few days that so, such that you can count them. And, uh, and as we noticed, it seemed like it was just yesterday when we were announcing that the beginning of Ramadan is tomorrow. And then now, here we are, uh, 27 days later, and we're announcing, it's, you know, this is the last 10 nights, and such and such a day is going to be the day of Eid. And the days kind of flew by. Uh, and yet, here we go, another Ramadan is basically almost over. And so, the same way that we experience how quickly the month of Ramadan is over is the same way that this dunya is going to be over. Our life begins, it goes by, and then we reach to the end point of our life and it speeds by so quickly. Uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he mentions this point uh, in Surah Al-Mu'mineen about how quickly the dunya goes by when Allah Azza wa Jal, he speaks, he's going, he, he speaks to us uh, in mentioning what's going to happen and what's going to take place on the Day of Judgment when he's going to be speaking to the disbelievers, the people of disobedience, the people of hypocrisy. Allah Azza wa Jal, he said, He will say to them, how many years did you spend on the earth? They will say, we were only on the earth for a day or part of a day. Like, listen to the question. The question was, how many years did you spend on the earth? Right? So, Sheikh, how, how, how many years have you been on the earth so far? So far? Yeah, so far. How, how old are you? I'm only 72. 72 years old. Okay, 72 years old. How, how, old, Sheikh, how old are you? 55. 55. Oh, he's young. He's still showing the Shabbat. Sheikh, how old are you? 82. 82. So we have 72, 55, 82. We have all these people who spent all these years on the earth. Allah's? <laughs> 40. 40? MashaAllah. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He. Uh, after all these years of an individual being on the earth, Allah will ask him, how many years did you spend on the earth? How many years did you spend on the earth? They will say, we are only there for a day or part of a day. Meaning the life that we spent on the earth, it was... Now that we've reached to the day of judgment, it's like a day or part of a day. I mean, we weren't really there for that long. Allah Ta'ala, He goes on, He says, قَالَ إِلَّا بِثْتُمْ إِلَّا قَلِيلًا لَوْ أَنَّكُمْ كُنْتُمْ تَعْلَمُونَ Allah says that you were only there for a small period of time, only if you would have known. Meaning that the life in this dunya is short. The life of this dunya is short. I mean, we don't have time. There's no, oh, so far afal, so far afal. Oh, I, I'm going to, I'm going to do it. I'm going to do it. Life is short. And Allah Taala, He said, "Lo anakum kuntum taalamun." If you only would have known, meaning while you were in this dunya, if you would have just recognized and realized how short your life actually was going to be, then you would not have spent all of your time chasing behind the dunya. If you would have realized while you were in this life, you know, how the reality of how short your life is actually going to be, then you would not have held on to your money. You would not have 
slept as long as you slept. You would not have traded the hereafter for these short amount of days of this dunya. If you would have known, if you would have known how short your life really was going to be, then you would not have traded Jannah for hellfire. You would not have listened to the shaitan whisper to you and convince you that sleep is better than salah. You would not have listened to the shaitan when he whispered to you and told you, if you give your money, you're going to be poor. You won't be able to afford your bills. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he's saying to these individuals, and he's speaking to these uh, people, these are the people of disbelief. Had you only knew. Allah azza wa jal, he, 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 he commands us with commandments and he prohibits us with prohibitions. And if we would have really knew how short our lives are going to be, then we would have been patient with obeying Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We, we would have been patient in staying away from the prohibitions that Allah azza wa jal has prohibited us from. We would have been patient and we would have prayed when Allah said to pray. We would have been patient and we would have eaten what Allah said to eat. We would have been patient and we would have stayed away from what Allah said to stay away from. If you would have known. And if the people of Iman, the people of faith, the people of obedience, these individuals, they understand how short life is. They understand how uh, the, the reality of the shortness of, of this dunya. So they are patient. They are patient in doing what Allah Ta'ala said, which is why Allah Azza wa Jalla says uh, in Surah Al-Mu'mineen, He says, "Inni jazaytuhum al-yawma bima sabaru annahum hum al -fahizun. Indeed, I have rewarded them, meaning the people of obedience. Indeed, I have rewarded them today because of what they were patient upon, that they are that they are going to be the successful. And so. The point here is that our time is precious and we have to spend every moment of it uh, seeking out the worship or seeking out the reward and the pleasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We can't spend it wasted. We can't spend it wasted. In the Sahih of Al Imam al Bukhari, he brings up this chain of narration on the authority of Abdullah ibn Abbas and radiallahu anhumah. Who said that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam he said Ni'matani maghboonun fihi ma kathirun min al-nas Al-suhatu wal-faraq He said alayhi wa sallatu wa sallam There are two bounties that most people are maghboon And we're going to talk about that in just a second He said there are two bounties that most people are maghboon uh, As it relates to those bounties uh, Health and free time the word uh, ghaban in the Arabic language is what we use uh, to refer to someone who has a very valuable, uh, extremely valuable item and then he sells it for something that does not have any value. So let's say for example, um, you own a, let's say you own a Mercedes Benz, brand new 2022, actually no, the 2023 model that nobody's even had yet, it hasn't even come out, but you own it, right? You got yourself one, and then you go and you sell it for a jar of dirt, right? Someone says, I'll buy that Mercedes from you. you say, okay, what you wanna give for me? What are you gonna give to me? He says, oh, I have this jar of dirt. You say, okay, give me the jar of dirt, and here you go, new Mercedes. And that is, there's not a comparison between the, the value of the, of the Mercedes and the value of a jar of dirt. There's no comparison. This is called ghabin. This is called ghabin. In the Arabic language, it's called ghabin. This is, so the loss, there's a, a huge amount of loss. Not just a person taking a little loss. Because sometimes we invest and we take a loss. And that's expected in business. But uh, this is, a ghabin is the type of loss that's like, 
Now, that's, that's, that's only someone who doesn't have intellect would agree to this type of, to this type of loss. This is called ghabit. And so the Prophet said, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, Ni'matani maghbunun fihi ma kathirun min nas That there are two bounties that most people have ghabit as it relates to these bounties. Meaning they give it away, and that, and that bounty that they've given away is valuable, and they haven't received anything valuable in return. What is it? Your health and your free time. Meaning, so the Prophet is saying, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, that people give away their youth. They give away their time. They give away the, the, the years of their life when they're healthy. They give away their free time. What do they get in return? Nothing that's valuable. Why? Because they spend this time doing things where they're not getting anything real in return. Some people, they work. So they get up and they go out and they dig holes and they get paid. And they bring home some money and they buy fruits and vegetables to live off of. Now a person will say, okay, this is what we call fa'ida dunyawiyah. This is a, uh, a dunyawi. This is a, a, a benefit that someone takes away in the dunya. Someone wakes up, he reads Quran. He's taking a benefit for the hereafter. Now what about a person who sits watching Netflix for three or four hours? Which benefit does he get? No dunya, no hereafter. It's as if he just spent three or four hours not even in existence. He gave away three or four hours and it got absolutely nothing in return. This is called ghabit. When a person sits scrolling through Facebook for, you know, mindless, you know, an hour, hour and a half, scrolling, 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 scrolling. He gets up after two hours. What has he gotten? What benefit has he gotten out of that? Any benefit for the hereafter? No. Any benefit for the dunya? No. So he just gave away two hours. This is called ghabit. Because he's maghboon. Meaning he gave away something precious and valuable and he received absolutely nothing in return. And so the Prophet ﷺ in this hadith is warning us against wasting our time in, 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 in doing things and being engaged in things that bring us absolutely no benefit. Which is why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the Quran has ordered us to race to do good deeds. It's ordered us to race to do good deeds. For example, Allah Ta'ala says uh, in Surah Al-Baqarah, فَاسْتَبِقُوا khayrat." So race to do the good things. Allah Ta'ala says in uh, Surah Ali Imran, وَسَارِعُوا إِلَى مَغْفِرَةٍ مِّن رَبِّكُمْ وَجَنَّةٍ عَرْضُهَا السَّمَوَاتُ وَالْأَرْضُ أُعِدَّتْ لِلْمُتَّقِينَ And race to the forgiveness of your Lord. And the Jannah, and race to Jannah, that its width is the distance between the heavens and the earth, that has been prepared for the people of Taqwa. Allah Ta'ala says in the Quran in Surah Al Hadid, Sabiqu ila maghfiratin min rabbikum wa jannatin abduha ka abdu al samai wal ard, u'iddat lil ladina amanu billahi wa rusulih. Allah Ta'ala says, Race to the forgiveness of your Lord. And the Jannah, that its distance is the, or the width of it is like the distance between the heaven and the earth, the sky and the earth, that has been prepared for those who believe in Allah and His messengers. And so, this, uh, this all tells us that we should seize the opportunity while we have it. We should seize the opportunity while we have it. And right now is, is one of the uh, last 10 nights of the month of Ramadan. One of the nights that it's possible for it to be Laylat al-Qadr. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has, has, has decreed that we will be allowed to see this night, witness this night. And so we have an opportunity because this night we'll never, we're never going to get it back. This night, we're never going to get it back. Now, and, I, and this, is some, this is one thing and the point that I tried to drive home about the difference between time and money. Because people understand the value of money. 
I don't know that people understand truly the value of time. So if you had a hundred dollars and you bought a hundred dollar bill and you balled it up, you say, ah, you tossed it in the garbage, right? You could say, oh, what was I thinking? You can go back and you can grab your hundred dollars out of the garbage and unfold it, right? And you can still spend it. What about a hundred hours or a hundred minutes? If you throw those away, can you go get them? And say, you know what? I made a mistake. I want my 100 minutes back. Left. When they're gone, they're gone. So this night, tonight, when it's gone, it's gone. And whatever you chose to do in this night, it will be written. And when, when it's written, it can't be changed. Because whatever it is that you've decided to do tonight, if you decide, you know what? I'm going to give. That's going to be written. And no one can take that away from you. If you decide, uh, I'm not going to give. I'm, I'm going to be stingy. I'm going to hold my money. That's also going to be written. And that's not going to be changed. And so tonight... Is, our, is an opportunity that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has blessed us all with. And it's up to us to decide what are we going to do. Are we going to allow this night to enter and to uh, come and go just haphazardly? And then on the day of judgment, when Allah asks us, I gave you that night, what did you do with it? What are we going to say? What answers are we going to have? And so each and every one of us, we have to decide how we're going to spend this night because this night is going to go quickly. I remember, I just, just, a, just it was almost just like a second ago, we were calling the Adhan from Maghrib and we were breaking our fast. Then we eat. Now we call the Adhan for Isha. Now we pray Isha. Now we start the fundraiser. And it's already 15 minutes after 10. Time does not wait for any one of us. And so the decisions that we make in each one of these moments is going to have an everlasting effect on the life that we will have in the hereafter. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he says, هَلْ جَزَاءُ الْإِحْسَانِ إِلَّا الْإِحْسَانِ Is the reward for good other than good? So meaning that when you choose to take these moments to do good, Allah Ta'ala is going to reward you with good. But if you choose in these moments to do evil, then Allah Ta'ala will reward you with that which you give out. As you give, so shall you receive. So if you want to be stingy, then Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala will withhold. If you want to be generous, then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will be generous with you. But it all goes back to us. How do we want to, our future in the hereafter, what is it that we want to see for ourselves? And so, um, this is just a small reminder that I have for myself. Um, I wanted to begin the night with this. And the reason why is because, just in case you were thinking, well, you know what, maybe I'll don't, let me see who else donates. And if someone else donates, then I'll come back next week and donate. You know, next week may not be here. We'll look up, and it'll be around next year's Ramadan. I mean, how many people, how many of us really, how many of us remember last Ramadan? Or the Ramadan before that? It was, it was, I have the memories of last year's Ramadan still fresh in my head. As though it was just yesterday. But yet here we are a year later, and it's another Ramadan. Do we want another year to go by and we haven't put forward any good deeds? We haven't sacrificed? So remind myself and remind us all that let's seize the opportunity, uh, this opportunity that Allah Ta'ala has given us this evening to do good, to give what Allah Subh'anaHu Wa Ta'ala has blessed us with. So it'll be written for us. 
in our scale of good deeds, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accept it from us all. Jazakallah khairan. Inshallah, on that note, we're going to start the, um, the fundraising. Um, so we're going to start off with the brothers and sisters that are here now, inshallah. Um, two things to mention. One, that we're not only fundraising for the Masjid Building Project, but for our regular expenses. Because um, as you know, everyone has uh, shifted their focuses on the building project and uh, kind of neglected the masjid, masjid expenses. So whatever's raised, inshallah, we're gonna allocate some of it to the masjid expenses, right? Because um, the doors need to stay open. Uh, if the masjid closes, then there's, there's no project. So just to remind everyone, inshallah, and whatever you give Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows, uh, we don't want to, to you know, make anyone feel um, um, uh, uncomfortable in mentioning them, but the way a fundraiser works is that, you know, when you give, you encourage other people to give. And the Prophet ﷺ did it with the companions. The Prophet ﷺ did it with the companions. He said, who will give such and such? So Bakr raised his hand. If, if, if it was not recommended, he would have come, he would have gone and said, Messenger of Allah, I'm, I'll give you on the side. He raised his hands or he said, oh Messenger of Allah, I will give. He made himself known that he's giving. What does it do? It, it encourages everyone else to give. Okay? Remember, as human beings, we're encouraged by the people around us. So nothing is wrong today if you say, you know, I give and I, I and that's fine. That's fine, inshallah. Um, we have Amir. Where's Amir? Ready? You should sit over here where you can see it. Huh? Yeah, hand them out. You can hand out. Um, we're going to hand out the pledge forms. Yes. 1,000. So we start off with 1,000 dollars, alhamdulillah. Um, so alhamdulillah, takbir. Allah Akbar. We're gonna hand out the pledge form. Some people don't, you know, they may not want to put their amounts on. Um, anyone else? What do you want to give? Give as much as you can. We want to raise as much as we can for uh, tonight, inshallah ta'ala. If you have a number you'd like to give, you can mention it now. I'll give 1,500. 1,500? Yes. MashaAllah. 500, 500, 1,500? Well, someone said 1,500, right? 1500, you gotta take notes because what happens is that yeah. we have to we gotta write, we gotta write it down, write it down on the, on the, um, on the uh, yeah, write it down on the thing so we can add it up. Okay, right, alhamdulillah, we got another 500, alhamdulillah. 1000, alhamdulillah, another 1000. Jazakallah khair, Anyone else? Give donations for 12,000. 12,000, alhamdulillah. He's giving twelve thousand. Twelve thousand, yeah. So six, right? Six. Put everything down on the paper so we have a nice tally, inshallah. Six hundred. Allah Akbar. Mashallah. May I reward everyone for giving so far. Um, also for the people on Facebook, uh, feel free to pitch in. Someone's monitoring Facebook. Yes, we got everybody already. Huh? That is monitoring, okay, inshallah. Um, sisters as well, and you know, you guys feel free to pull out the pledge forms. Someone's asking, please post the, the link where we can donate. Yeah, they're posting it right now. The link is being posted right now on Facebook where you can donate. You can donate either by Zelle. Zelle is beautiful because you know they don't take any money out, and it comes uh, instantaneously to us. You can also go to, to, to the website www.floridaislamiccenter.org, www.floridaislamiccenter.org, and um, you can donate there as well through PayPal. You can use um, PayPal or you can donate with your card. If you're gonna use Zelle, remember that you must use the email donate at floridaislamiccenter.org. Donate at Florida Islamic Center that all if you're using Zell. Um, I'm, I'm, we're assuming that the, the Facebook crew and people that are on Facebook they're gonna all donate online. But just in case someone wants to give a check, they can also give a check. Uh, they'll mail it into Florida Islamic Center. Well, you'll write it out to Florida Islamic Center and mail it to the PO box. <coughs> Excuse me. PO box one zero four Mineola, Florida. 
And uh, because uh, you know it's officially Laylatul Qadr, one of the possible nights, and we're seeking out in the nights, all right? Um, a donation was made early on, and I think it's only fair to add it to it, uh, even though it might have been given a little bit before the fundraiser. So we can add ten thousand dollars to that. So we'd add ten thousand dollars, Allah Akbar, may Allah reward Allah everyone. Allah. So add add the ten thousand as well. Who's, who's taking the notes? Um, they're taking an oath, right? I mean, we're taking oath on that. Did you give trophies in your bank? Huh? Did you give trophies in your bank? No. Five hundred dollars. You know that person specifically asked not to disclose. Are they eight? Eight. Fifteen thousand. Fifteen thousand. Okay. Let's get it. Give me one of those forms I can also fill it out. Quiet. Everybody's writing. Did you write? <laughs> Alhamdulillah. Um, not necessarily the names, but at least we put the figures out. Inshallah. Jazakallah khair. Mashallah. These people, three quarters of names. Alhamdulillah. May we reward you and bless you. Say Amin. And one thing I would like to, you know, really commend the young, the young uh, members of our community. They have been donating a lot. The young kids of our masjid and even the, you know, the young men and women, they donate. You know, and um, that's a beautiful thing to see because they are the future of the community, inshallah. They will be the ones to expand and build other masjids and other facilities that are needed and spend in the path of Allah. For those live on Facebook, uh, please continue to, to share these links. Share it to as many people as you can right now. Um, any contacts that you may have, uh, share the Facebook live link. Perhaps these people may also give. Anyone has any questions on Facebook? They can uh, ask. They can ask any questions pertaining to the project. We we'll, we we'll take any questions, inshallah. We have all the forms already sent in. Any all the forms? Yeah. I mean, we can have to take these in. Also, we're taking pledges, so if people want to make to even make a pledge tonight, inshallah, this is, you know, Allah will reward you based on the attention, intention as well. Even having a good intention in the night of Qadr or any of the you know, last uh, 10 nights, if it is the night of Qadr, Allah is going to reward you based on the intention as well. Inshallah, hopefully He will guide you and grant you success to fulfill those intentions. How old are you? Come here, come here, Nine. come here. Nine? And you donated all of this? Yes, sir. <laughs> <laughs> Inshallah, here you go. Where did the... Yeah, Inshallah. Yeah, I see. 
get out of that today. Well, that's no way to add to your swallow. <laughs> If anyone makes any, um, we're just reading the Facebook, if you make out any checks, please make the checks payable to Florida Islamic Center. That's the correct uh, PO box, 104 Manila, Florida, 34755. And again, Zell, go to do donate at Florida Islamic Center. See what's going on on Zell. Hmm? Yeah, I think Zell gives them a receipt. Right, Tamir? This, this, this is going to be a tax receipt? From us. We can we can give them a receipt. Anyone who wants a receipt direct from us, they can get it. But I think they get a tax tax receipt by Zelle. And all of these, all your contributions are um, tax deductible if anybody's interested. You got all these? I all of them. Oh, we have more than that. Yeah, well, I, remember I, gave him, I gave him another figure to add. Mm -hmm. So it's 20. He added 10,000? 10. Okay. My mother mentioned 12. So 22 12. plus 7. But I mentioned 12. We're at, we're at 29. How much was it? 12. 12. We're at 29. We're at 29,000 so far, 100 left. So, so far, just to update everyone, we reached uh, $29,000, alhamdulillah. That's Anything a lot. On Zelle? On Zelle, on Internet, yeah. I heard it's from a non Islamic university. An anonymous brother is going to give them 20. Inshallah. Inshallah. Oh, so we're, we're almost there. Yeah. 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 So, mashallah, that's uh, 29. 29. 49. Alhamdulillah, we're almost at 50,000, brother. Allah, may Allah reward everyone for their contributions. Grant them Jannah, build for them a home in paradise. So still, we're still not closed off yet. We want everyone to share this. We want to see what's going on on, 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 the, um, on the Facebook. Yeah. And just to let you guys know, within the last couple um, days, people have been giving. Add a hundred. Add. Add five hundred. Did you say add five hundred? Are you guys counting the online? Uh, anything online? Huh? Okay, so add a add hundred, add five hundred. So, so add six hundred. Add $25, add $10. Mm -hmm, that's what I'm seeing. Add another 100. $62,000, right? Alhamdulillah, mashallah. 62, how do you get to 62? We're at 59. Yeah, well, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala yudha'ifu li man yasha. Alhamdulillah. You gotta make sure he doesn't make any... If the treasurer makes any mistake, you know, it comes off from, <laughs> from his bank account. <laughs> you don't make mistakes like that.
I think that's all, that's all we have so you far. Have, you have eight huh? more viewers. Huh? You have eight more new viewers. Eight more viewers? Eight new viewers. viewers. New viewers. Yeah. So they just tuned in. Yeah, yes. they might come. Yeah. So for those who just tuned into Facebook, they just uh, logged in. Our fundraiser so far, we raised how much? $62,000, alhamdulillah, which is good. We're a very small community. Alhamdulillah, may I reward everyone for their generous contributions. If you want to donate, please uh, do so. You can go by, go to Zelle, donate to Zelle by using the email donate at floridaislamiccenter.org or you could go to our website, www.floridaislamiccenter.org and you can pay by uh, PayPal or by your card. Whatever card you have. And a lot, just to let you let you all know that a lot of our, our community does not have Facebook. A lot of our community doesn't have Facebook, but people still donate. Alhamdulillah. Um, but sharing these videos that we send out is really important. Someone from our own community, right? Not our masjid, but within Claremont, came by today to the masjid man and gave us. We can probably add that to the end of the check. I didn't even open it, but um. The guy said, I asked, I asked him, how did you hear about us? Well, what do you know about us? You know, he said, well, um, I got the message on Facebook. Someone from South Florida got it and sent him, hey, they're building a message in your area. And he got it and he came all the way to us and he gave us two checks. Right? So when you share the message, you don't know how it's going to come back to someone that actually wants to donate by sharing the message. Um, and we, th this is just what we received tonight. And within the last couple of nights, Alhamdulillah, people have been donating a lot. You know, I think um, it, it, it might be safe to say within the last 10 nights, we might have gotten up to like 80 or $90,000, if you include what we got tonight, which is, uh, which is good, Alhamdulillah. Really good. So let's talk a little bit about the project. Who's coming in the morning to help us? <laughs> so about the project, brothers, um, the next stage is just to finish up the block walls. When the block walls are done, what's gonna go next is the, the beams, then the roof, okay, and, that's, and then put in the windows and the doors and we seal off the building. Once the building is sealed off, if we can accomplish this by the end of the year, that will be tremendous sealing off the building completely. So then the only thing left is the interior, uh, you know, the sheetrock and finishing up the, um, the doing the, the air condition and electrical and so on, but the building is completely sealed, which is good. So we estimate that we need about $450,000 to seal the building completely. You know, so from the outside, the building looks as though it's finished, but to the inside, there's a lot of work still to be done. But that is still an accomplishment. It's sealed. You don't have to worry about rain or anything like that. You can work in the inside. Inshallah. Um, you guys have any questions about it? One of the things also, uh, someone came by, what was it, a couple days ago, and they, I took them for a tour around the project. And this one guy, he was really, really interested in the, um, the fact that we have a ghusl room room to wash the mayat and so on and I told him yeah that's part of the service we want to provide we want to be able to take care of anyone that dies within the community um, we'll wash them or shroud them and we'll perform the janazah and so on and um, the man uh, you know, he's, he decided he wants to contribute to the project alhamdulillah but it really touched him and all he said he said he's worried that if he died you know people may not even know that he passed away there are a lot of people you know, they don't have a lot of family members with them, you know, and they're concerned about that. But part of being 
part of uh, the benefits of being of being part of a community, Islamic community, is that when somebody passes away, you don't have to worry about it. You have a huge community there waiting for you to, not waiting for you to die, but waiting to pray your janazah for you. And uh, this was something that he was really interested in. You know, he, he was actually became very emotional when he knew that we were going to provide such a service. So Alhamdulillah, this is a, this is a great a great benefit. And there are many people. Okay, we have two more donations online. Uh, can you guys see them? Let me see. Two hundred fifty dollars. Is it two? Yep. Nice. So two fifty and one hundred. Two fifty and one hundred. That's three fifty. Okay. May Allah reward and bless all of these donors. So many Muhammads. Everybody is. Everybody's name is Muhammad. Mashallah. It has to be the most popular name in the world, Muhammad. They yeah, after our Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Yeah, so the point is, this man was really interested in the fact that we have a, a Rasul. Um, many families come by and they see that, you know, the classrooms are being built and they're interested in, in, uh, in, 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 in getting their kids to come to the school and to the madrasa and so on. We have a very, very amazing project in front of us. And I really think, inshallah ta'ala, if we continue to be sincere, we continue to follow uh, the footsteps of our pious predecessors, the Salaf of Salih, follow the Sunnah of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, follow the Book of Allah, then inshallah we can build a model community, a model community where people will want to come to our community to be part of it. And you guys are being, you're getting the opportunity to be the pioneers, the ones that started this. And later on, we don't know how big this may become, but you guys started this. We were all part of it. Alhamdulillah. And that reward is going to be tremendous, inshallah ta'ala. We spoke a couple of weeks ago about, you know, those who spent before the conquest of Mecca and those who spent after the conquest of Mecca. Right? Qabl al-Fat or Ba'd al-Fat. Right? Who, who do you think receives most reward? The reward is greater with those who spent before the conquest or after the conquest? Huh? Before the conquest. They were the pioneers. They made that effort. But no one else wanted to make it. And so later on, the next generation that came, they benefited off of their hard work. So as we struggle, you know, we struggle within our community and struggle within you know, our finances and our whatever, whatever challenges in front of us to build this community, Inshallah, the reward is tremendous. And as Imam Abdullah was mentioning, this is the best thing you can invest in. It's the best thing you can invest in because you know, we're going to leave this dunya really soon. Sooner than we know it, we'll leave this dunya. Um, and the best thing we can take with us is our good deeds. It's the only thing we can take with us. So as we spend, keep that in mind that you know, just, this is going to pay off in the hereafter. And it's going to pay off from the moment of death, from the time the angels come to us. If the angel comes to us and it's in a good form and a beautiful, you know, beautiful sight, this is a sign, this is a muqaddama introduction that everything that's coming next is going to be good. The barzakh is going to be good, inshallah ta'ala. Okay, the, the hereafter is going to be good. So that's why we have to make that effort, inshallah. May Allah grant us the tawfiq and benefit. Amen. Amen. I mean, where we're at right now. 370. So uh, we're going to put Imam Abdullah on to uh, tell us a little bit about, you know, a little bit of motivation. Inshallah, tell his motivate us. And then uh, we'll give another tally. And we're probably um, looking at it. We may end off at by 11 o'clock. Inshallah. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala he says in the Quran
just a hit within my mind. And now, um, I mean, add a thousand, add seven hundred and five hundred. Thousand seven hundred five. So thousand plus twelve hundred plus twenty two hundred. Seventeen. Plus twenty two hundred. Twenty two hundred. Add twenty two hundred. Twenty two hundred. Talking, you were saying, I hand the mic over, uh, and that's the first ayah that came to my mind, and then it slipped my mind. Um, وأنفقوا في سبيل الله هذه الآية وأنفقوا في سبيل الله ولا تلقوا بأيديكم إلى التهلكة وأحسنوا إن الله يحب المحسنين. الله تعالى says and spend in the way of Allah and do not throw yourselves by your hands to destruction uh, and do good for verily Allah loves the good doers. الإمام الطبري رحمه الله in his tafsir of this ayah. Uh, he says that the meaning of this verse is Allah's commanding us to give for Allah's sake and not for us to throw ourselves to destruction with our own hands by withholding and being stingy and not giving when Allah Ta'ala has commanded us to give. So this ayah, And do not throw your hands and do not throw yourselves to destruction by your own hands, meaning if you're stingy and you do not give for what Allah Ta'ala has ordered you to give, then you'll be using your own hands to throw yourselves to destruction. So it's almost like you hold, you grab your money and you, you hold tight, but in the, in, the, in, the, in, the, in the action of holding tight, you're tossing yourself into destruction. And Allah Ta'ala is prohibiting us from tossing ourselves uh, to destruction with our own hands. So he orders us to do good. And from the good that we can do is for us to give from what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has ordered us to give from that which he has provided for us. One of the things that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions in the Quran, Allah ta'ala says, وَمَا لَكُمْ أَن لَا تُنْفِقُوا فِي سَبِيلِ اللَّهِ وَلِلَّهِ مِرَاقُ السَّمَوَاتِ وَالْأَرْضِ And why do you not give for the sake of Allah? And Allah is the owner and possessor of the heavens and the earth. Now, Allah Azza wa Jal, He orders us to give, not because Allah is in any need of our wealth. Allah Subhanahu wa Taala says in the Quran, "وَمَا خَلَقْتُ الْجِنَّ وَالْإِنْسَ إِلَّا لِيَعْبُدُونَ مَا أُرِيدُ مِنْهُمْ مِنْ رِزْقٍ وَمَا أُرِيدُ مِنْهُمْ أَنْ يُطْعِمُونَ إِنَّ اللَّهَ هُوَ الرَّزَّاقُ ذُو الْقُوَّةِ الْمَتِينِ." Allah Ta'ala says in these verses from Surah Al-Thariyat, He says, and I did not create the jinn or mankind except that they should worship me. Uh, I do not want for them uh, any provisions and I do not want for them to feed me. Indeed, Allah, He is a razaq He is the provider, mateen, the possessor of power and the strong. So Allah Ta'ala is in no need of us to feed Him or to provide for Him Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, actually he owns us. He's the creator of us and he owns us. And even with him owning us, because he created us and brought us into existence, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala purchased from us 
be our lives as well as our wells, as well as our wealth. As Allah Ta'ala says in the Quran, uh, Allah ishtara min al and anfusahum wa mu'alahum bi anna lahum al jannah. Indeed, Allah has purchased from the believers their selves and their wealth that they shall have jannah. And so Allah Subhanahu wa Ta'ala, He He orders us to give, not because Allah Ta'ala is in need of our money. Allah is the one who gave us the money to begin with. But He orders us to give for our own personal benefit. For our own personal benefit. Because the money we give, it serves as a purification. As Allah Ta'ala says in the Quran, خُذْ مِنْ أَمْوَالِهِمْ صَدَقَةً وَتُزَكِّيهِمْ بِهَا Allah Ta'ala says to the Prophet والسلام, take from them sadaqah, take from them charity, that it will cleanse them and purify them with it. It will cleanse their wealth, right? It will cleanse any shubha, any wealth that may be, uh, you know, a little bit halal or maybe some gray areas as it relates to it. You give sadaqah, it cleanses it. And it purifies the individual. And he sins, you know, person has committed some sins, has committed some wrongdoings, he's fell into some mistakes, give some sadaqah. Why? Because that sadaqah will serve as a purification, a purification of the person's wealth, and the purification of the person's soul. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, uh, he says, uh, Allah ta'ala, he says, uh, in in the Quran as well. وَمَا آتَيْتُمْ مِنْ رِبًا لِيَرْبُوَ فِي أَمْوَالِ النَّاسِ فَلَا يَرْبُوا عِنْدَ اللَّهِ وَمَا آتَيْتُمْ مِنْ زَكَاتٍ وَمَا آتَيْتُمْ وَمَا آتَيْتُمْ مِنْ زَكَاتٍ تُرِيدُونَ وَجْهَ اللَّهِ فَأُولَئِكَ هُمُ الْمُضْعِفُونَ Allah Ta'ala says, whoever has given riba لِيَرْبُوَ فِي أَمْوَالِ النَّاسِ whoever has given something to seek an increasement in the wealth of the people. And what this verse means is that, let's say, let's say you need something, right? So I said, you say, well, I said, you need some food? I say, yeah, I need some food. So, okay, all right, I'll give you some food. You want some chicken? Yeah, I'll give you some chicken, all right? What you want, you want some, you want some apples? Yeah. Give the brother some apples. But why though? Because in the future, I want something from him, right? I want something from him because I know that he's on his way to do big things, get high position. Maybe he doesn't have high position right now. That's why he needs something. So I give him a little something. Why? Because when he gets to high position, I'm going to say, hey, remember I gave you some chicken? Remember the chicken? <laughs> right? So right. So Allah says, وَمَا أَتَيْتُمْ مِنْ رِبَا لِيَرْبُوَ فِي أَمْوَالِ النَّاسِ Whatever you give, of riba because you want to you want an increase from the wealth of the people Allah. So this does not increase with Allah. Meaning when you give for the purpose, sole purpose, because you want something from that person in the future, then this is doesn't increase with Allah Azza Doesn't multiply for you. It's not purified for you. When you give from your zakat that you want by it, the face of Allah, and you're sincere, and you give sadaqah from your wealth, solely for Allah Ta'ala, right, for the face of Allah Subh'anaHu Wa Ta'ala, فَأُولَٰئِكَ هُمُ الْمُضْعِفُونَ Those are the ones who will be multiplied. Meaning, Allah Ta'ala, when you give for His sake, your wealth is multiplied. Now I know, you say, how is that possible? I give a thousand dollars? I mean, the way things work, who do you the bank with? Bank of America? Chase? Chase. Chase, okay. You go to Chase and say, Chase, Mr. Chase man, please give me a thousand dollars out of my bank account. What do they do? Subtract one thousand. So now you have a thousand dollars left. Or a thousand dollars now has been subtracted from your account. You're a thousand dollars short. Right? That's how it works. That's what people understand. But when we're dealing with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, it's not how it works. When you subtract for Allah's sake, in reality you're doing addition. When you subtract for Allah, 
In reality, you're doing addition. Because the Prophet said, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, Ma naqal samanu min sadaq. That wealth has never been decreased by giving sadaq. So, and when it comes to Allah, and giving for Allah, one minus one doesn't equal zero. One minus one could equal 700. How? Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, مَثَلُ الَّذِينَ يُنْفِقُونَ أَمْوَالَهُمْ فِي سَبِيلِ اللَّهِ كَمَثَلِ حَبَّةِ أَنْبَتَتْ سَبْعَ سَنَابٍ فِي كُلِّ سُبُولَةٍ مِئَةُ حَبَّةِ وَاللَّهُ يُضَاعِفُ لِمَنْ يَشَاءِ Allah Ta'ala says the example of the one who gives his wealth for the sake of Allah is like the habba, like the grain that has sprouted seven sanabin, has sprouted seven branches. And in every branch is a hundred grains. So he plants one grain. That one grain sprouts seven branches, and each branch is a hundred grains. How much emmy grains now is that? Seven hundred. مَثَلُ الَّذِينَ يُنْفِقُونَ أَمْوَالَهُمْ فِي سَبِيلِ اللَّهِ The example of the one who gives his wealth for the sake of Allah is like this person who takes his dollar and he plants it for Allah Ta'ala. He gets what? Seven hundred in return. It's not like dealing with the bankers or dealing with the people of dunya where when you give one you take one out, and now you're left with nothing left. When you give, when you give, you give back more. And then we have this, this, this mushahid, the, the example that uh, Abdul Alim, Shaykh Abdul Alim mentioned here just a few moments ago, uh, Abu Bakr al-Siddiq, who's always known him to be a rich man, right? Have we ever had any reports that Abu Bakr was poor? No. Have you ever heard that Abu Bakr was poor? Never. Okay. What about the time when the Prophet ﷺ called for the people to give? And, and Omar said, you know what? Abu Bakr beats me all the time. This day, I'm not going to let him outdo me. So he brought half of everything he owned, he brought to the Prophet ﷺ. And the Prophet asked him, والسلام, what did you leave for your family? He said, this is half, and I left my family half. So Abu Bakr came and he brought an even bigger pile of money. And the Prophet ﷺ said, what did you leave for your family? He said, this is everything I own and I left my family Allah and his messenger. Now, at that moment, Abu Bakr had given everything that he owned. And I just asked you, have you ever heard of Abu Bakr being poor? So you said no. Abu Bakr was known, he, was, he had wealth, he was rich. But he, on that day, he gave everything. So how did he get his money back? Why wasn't he a poor man after that? When he gave everything he owned, why was he not now considered to be a poor man? That's because he gave what he gave, and he gave it for Allah Ta'ala. And Allah Subh'anaHu Wa Ta'ala returned him back to his status of being wealthy. Even after he emptied everything that he owned for Allah Ta'ala. And so when we're dealing with giving for Allah, this is an important point. When we're giving for Allah, when we're giving for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, we can't be giving so that we can put our name on Facebook. Or, well, yeah, we, we give, you know, we give $100,000 and we say, you know what, Imam, I'm going to give you $100,000 on the condition that we name the masjid after my grandfather. Right? Because we want, I want everyone to know that we, this is what we did. Say that. When we give, we give for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And this is an important aspect of giving. Giving solely for the purpose of Allah azza wa jalla. Giving solely for the purpose of pleasing Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Being grateful to what Allah has given us by extracting a portion of what Allah azza wa jalla has given us and giving it for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And so we have to give, or we should give, uh, from what Allah Ta'ala has given us. And to Allah belongs the dominion of the heavens and the earth. And everything that you spend, and everything that you spend, know for certainty that Allah Subh'anaHu Wa Ta'ala knows about what you have spent. إِنَّ اللَّهَ لَا يَخْفَى عَلَيْهِ شَيْءٌ فِي الْأَرْضِ وَلَا فِي السَّمَاءِ Indeed Allah, nothing is concealed from Him 
not in the earth nor in the sky. So if you donate it from your iPhone and you're on the airplane donating from the airplane, then Allah Ta'ala knows that you're donating. If you, Android, from Android. From and, uh, the iPhone. <laughs> well, you're donating from the Android and the iPhone. <laughs> so if you were in a bunker, if you were in a bunker underneath of the ground, donating, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows that you're donating. The important aspect of this is donating and making sure that you're sincere when your donations for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and Allah azza wa jalla will accept it and he will grow it for you. He will grow it for you. As Imam al-Bukhari rahimahullah, uh, he brings in his sahih that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said, Man tasaddaqa bi adli tamratin min kasb al-tayyib wa la yaqbal Allah illa al-tayyib فَإِنَّ اللَّهَ يَتَقَبَّلُهَا بِيَمِينِهِ ثُمَّ يُرَبِّيهَا كَمَا يُرَبِّي أَحَدُكُمْ فَلُوَهُ حَتَّى تَكُونَ مِثْلُ الْجَبَلِ The Prophet وسلم, said, whoever gives in charity an equal amount of a date, meaning a date, if a person gave a date's worth of charity, how much is a date worth? One date, not a box of dates, but one date, how much is that worth? If you wanted to buy one date from the store, how much would that cost you? Ten cents, Ten cents, Ten cents, cents. maybe. Fifty cents. Fifty cents. Fifty, 50 seventy-five cents. Seventy-five cents. Okay. Yeah, Ali. Yeah, Ali. Between twenty-five, fifty, seventy-five cents for one date. The Prophet said, "Sallallahu alaihi wasallam." Whoever gives a date, what's equal to a date in sadaq, min kasbin tayyib, from good earnings. And Allah will not accept except that which is tayyib, except that which is good. But verily Allah will grasp that sadaqah with his right hand. Then he will increase it. He will grow it. He will grow it. Like it's the way that one of you would raise his uh, his baby horse. If someone had a, a horse, anybody deal with, with horses? Anybody raise horses? Oh, yeah. You raise cows? Yeah. Okay, so maybe it's, maybe it's similar. So if you have a horse, a baby horse, and you want to raise it, right? Because you want it to be strong. You want it to grow up and, and be healthy so you can get on and you can ride it, right? So what do you do? You're concerned with it, right? You go and check on it and make sure every step of the, every step of the process that the horse is growing up in a good, healthy way. Allah, the Prophet said, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, that Allah yurabbi hadi sadaqa, kama yurabbi ahadukum faluwahu, hatta takuna mithil jabal. Until that sadaqa, that, 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 that date's worth of sadaqa, that date's worth of charity, grows until it's like the size of a mountain. That's what Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala does with the charity that's given for His sake. So even if it's a small amount, that small amount, that young man who just came over here and said, oh, I gave $20. That could be the $20 that gets the masjid open. It opens the doors for the people. It could be that $20 that could be the tipping point that opens the Florida Islamic Center for the Muslims to come and have their five daily prayers and the Salat al-Jumu'ah and the services uh, that are being offered, the Ta'leem and the Hibb al-Quran and the Sunday school for the kids. And so that $20 could have been that which allows and opens the floodgates for all of the benefit to pour out into the community. So let us not uh, look down on our abilities to, to spend. So one person, he said, oh, I heard that there was $20,000 that was going to be given, right? So you may become intimidated. You say, oh, I don't have 20000 so let me keep my little $10 in my pocket. I say, nah, no, 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 no. Give your $10. If that's what you have to give, then give it. And be sincere in your giving. Because with the quwa, quwa til al-ikhlas, the strength of your sincerity can put that $10, the barakah of that $10 can grow to be something that no, no one of us could imagine. So give, give, and give. You've already given whoever that person was the twenty thousand. You know what I mean? Make it twenty one. No problem, inshallah. You touched the heart of that brother. He said he wants to put the joint back. 
MashaAllah. MashaAllah. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala reward that brother and, and increase him in his wealth. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala increase him in his family. And we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to give him Jannah and all of those who have given this evening. Because we, we can't, we don't, we, we don't understand, if, if we don't give with, with, with understand, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the owner of the, of the heavens and the earth. And we're not asking anybody to be Abu Bakr, right? Because we know it's going to be difficult, your iman, to be at the iman of Abu Bakr. Who from amongst us is going to be able to do that? So we're not saying go home, empty, empty your IRA, empty your... Bitcoin accounts, you know, bring all of that to the masjid and just dump it here on the masjid floor. Now, I know that's going to be hard for some of us. And that's not what we're saying. What we are saying is, give a little something. Give a little something. And watch the power of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala work in your life. Allah azza wa jalla is never going to disgrace you for being obedient to him. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is is not going to make you poor and beg on the street because you gave sadaqah. You put, who, who was the, how many people have you seen in Orlando, in the Orlando area at the stoplights where they have the little card and you stop at the red light and they have the little cardboard and they have on it, please help me, this, that, right? You've seen these people? Right. right. How many of them said, I got, I, I'm poor now and I'm homeless because I gave sadaqah. I'm poor now and I'm homeless because I built the masjid. How many people that have built the masjid that you know are now, are now living on the streets begging for money? I don't know any of them. Every person that's, that's poor and he's homeless, that's not his situation. He didn't become poor and homeless because he, 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 he went into tijara with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Now he may have become poor and homeless going into tijara, into tijara with chase. That, that's possible. You, you, you want to go around and you want to you want to dip and dabble your feet into Bitcoin, into, into Bank of America, or what was that, like Merrill Lynch and, and E-Trade, you, you, may, you may lose your money. But no one has ever lost investing with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. No one. No one has ever come forward and said, oh, and, you know, giving sadaqah in, in return, and that's Allah. No one has ever, no one has ever denied the benefits of giving charity. But we've heard the stories of the people who've invested, but yet here we are, so many people want to invest. And investing is such a good idea that everyone wants to do. So why is it that a sure thing, like giving charity, we stay away from, but something that is muhtamal, something that we could lose everything, we want to rush and we jump into it. So this is something that uh, I wanted to remind myself and remind us all that we are dealing with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and please that when we give, let's, let's make sure we're giving you know, sincerely for Allah azza wa jal and don't let any one of us look down on the small donations and let not one of us uh, look down on the big donations uh, but all donations are important and the barakah is from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. May Allah reward you and bless you for your kind words. And may Allah uh, reward all of the donors for their contributions. I'd like to, uh, what's the total we have right, right now? 82,811. MashaAllah. MashaAllah, what is that? 82,000? 82,000. 82,000. Yeah. 82,000. We have another, so 82, MashaAllah. 84, 211. The number's getting... We got like a competition going on here. Alhamdulillah. <laughs> so that's 85, mashallah. 85,211. 85,211. May Allah reward and bless you all. Now, something I want to remind you all of. We give, but the more we know about the benefits of giving, we can utilize it to our benefit, right? Remember the story of the three people who were locked in the cave? Right? Three young men, they were locked in a cave and they couldn't come out of that cave. They got trapped in the cave. Mm -hmm. So, what did they do? Who remembers? They did some. Huh? They didn't die. They didn't die. They got out. They they did what is called no. 
they did what is called al tawassul They invoked Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala by the good deeds that they did. And they said, Oh Allah, I did such and such deed and I did it only for your sake. I did it sincerely for you. If you know that I did this sincerely for you, open the rock, move the rock from in front of the cave. And each one of them made dua and after the three of them made their duas, the rock moved. Allah moved the rock for them because they couldn't move it. Okay? So the story goes like this. Remind me if I made a, made a mistake. So one of the young men said, Oh Allah, I stayed away from committing zina. Okay? Someone uh, called him to commit zina and he could have he could have done it if he wanted. And he said, Oh Allah, I stayed away from zina and I did it only because of uh, for your sake. Oh Allah, if you know that I did it for you, Allah, open, open the rock and it moved a little bit. Then the other person, he said, Oh Allah, I gave uh, food and drink to my parents while my, oh, my children and my family were hungry and in need. I gave it to my parents. Correct, right? And no, that was, uh, he, didn't, he, didn't, he didn't begin, he, he started with his parents first. He started with his parents first, right. yeah. That he night, started, that he night gave, they, went, that he, they went to sleep. His family was hungry and he gave, his, he gave priority to his parents. And he stood and over he, them. And he stood over them. And he said, oh Allah, if it is, you know, that I did this sincerely for Allah, remove this hardship from us. And the rock moved a little bit more. So it wasn't enough for them to get through. And then one of them made dua and said, oh Allah, I gave sadaqa. I gave charity. And if you know that I did it sincerely for you, O oh Allah, then remove the rock. And the rock moved and they were able to pass through. So what does this teach you? The teacher, the teaches us as Muslims that we can do tawassul by our good deeds. But it's only if you do these deeds sincerely for Allah. It has to be done sincerely for Allah. Right? A hundred percent for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You may be in some type of difficulty one day, and you may you know you raise your hands to Allah and say, Oh Allah. Remember that night I gave sadaqah and I gave charity and I gave and I gave and I gave and I gave all for your pleasure. Not for anyone to know me, not for anyone to praise me, not for anything else, but for your pleasure, O oh Allah. If you know that I did it only for you, O oh Allah, remove this hardship from my life, whatever it may be. It may be a sickness, it may be uh, some type of health condition. You can make dua to Allah. This is called tawassul. Right? Uh, Allah mentions in the Quran, um, "Rabbana innana amanna innana amanna bima anzalta wa taba'na rasul faktubna wa nasirna." Rabbana innana amanna. Trying to remember the ayat in Ali bin Amr saying, "Fa ansi wa jaa the Quran jaa the Bakra." What's the What's the ayat again? Um, innana amanna. Yeah. So Allah mentions in the, in, in the Quran that one of the du'as that you can make is saying, Oh Allah, we believe. We believe in you. Because of your action of believing in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you can say, Oh Allah, forgive me. Because you did something sincerely for Allah. So if it is that you had faith in Allah sincerely for Him, not for anyone else, then you can ask Allah by that good deed and any good deed that you do. Okay, I'd like to share um, uh, um, some, something that, that happened to someone that I know of in Medina. Um, they were having problems and they couldn't have children. Okay, so in Medina, we know that there are always pilgrims coming, right? People coming for Umrah and Hajj. So this person said that whenever pilgrims would come, I would go to them and ask them to help them. Whatever, need, whatever they needed. If they, if they got lost, I would try to help them to find the, their way. Or if they needed food, take them, take them and feed them. Because they are pilgrims that come and they're really poor. Whatever they need. And the person said that they made dua to Allah to cure, cure them from that sickness. And Allah SWT granted them their, their wish and they were able to have children. So this was through their, their act of tawassul. So whenever we do deeds sincerely for Allah, you can ask Allah by those deeds. Oh Allah, grant me whatever I want. Grant me such and such. But it doesn't mean that at the time when you're doing the deeds, you're doing it for Allah to grant you this. You must give it sincerely for Allah. Only for Allah's pleasure. You don't want anything back in return except 
what is in the hereafter. Because mm. sometimes we give what we want the reward right here in the dunya. Okay? So Islam, Allah encourages us to seek the reward in the hereafter. Give it sincerely only for Allah's pleasure in the hereafter. Later on, a time is going to come and you want to call upon Allah, you can call upon Allah by that deed. By that deed that you did. And ask for Allah if you know I did such and such, sincerely for you, grant me whatever you may, your need may be. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is most generous. And He has the ability to answer our du'as. So as you know, as we know, we are still in the, the last ten nights. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to grant us al afu Allahumma inna nas'aluka al afwa Allahumma inna ka'afu wa tuhibu al-afwa fa'afu anna. Allahumma inna nas'aluka al-huda wa tuqa wa al-akhafata wa al-ghina. Rabbana atina fi dunya hasana wa fi al-akhirati hasana wa qina azab al nar so what are we at now? Somebody has the same number? 85. 85. 85. So let's see if uh, the last count. Now we're probably going to close off soon. Yeah, so um, I'm not seeing anything in Zell. Or anything in Gmail. So I think, I think that's it. So I think that's it, inshallah. We can call it a night. People can still donate if you're on Facebook. Um, and you send the link, still encourage them that, you know, Allah, you're not donating because we're here. You're donating for Allah's pleasure. And if this is the night of Qadr, you, you have all until the until Fajr to keep giving and keep donating. So share the link with everyone. Uh, some people may wake up early in the, in the morning or before Fajr and may want to donate. Allah may guide their hearts. It is... It is not too late. It is there's still time to donate. Since Allah wants to bless us and reward us for whatever we've contributed, may Allah put it on our scale of good deeds, and may Allah help us to be among those who will be pleased with Him and He will be pleased with us. Amen. Allahu Akbar. 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 Allahu Akbar.